Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at an NES game, and that happens to be The Chronicle of Radia War. And it happens to be an action RPG that was developed and published by Tecmo, which is a huge surprise. As much as I love them, it really is unfortunate that they don't make a whole lot of RPGs, and as for the reason why, it's probably because of the fact that they made a huge fuck-up on the game Secrets of the Stars on SNES. But thankfully this game became before that, so it actually has a chance at being good, because this game was released in 1991 and it was only released in Japan on the Famicom. But the game was going to get released outside of Japan as the Tower of Radia, but unfortunately it just never happened. But there was a box art that was made for it, and it actually does look pretty cool. Although, I do like the original box art a lot better, but I do think that this uh, North American one actually doesn't look bad. So thankfully they didn't pull a Mega Man number one out of it. So anyways, for now let's get talking about the game story. So it begins with our main character, who you get to name whatever you want, ends up having a ship crashing into this weird fantasy world. And just like every other story out there, he has amnesia. Yeah, who would have figured? Well anyways, he ends up waking up and he ends up getting rescued by some wandering mage named Darius. And after helping out the town, it turns out that there was another spaceship that was crashed and the person that was in that one happens to be Princess Lafus. Lafus? Lafus? I have no idea. But I'm sure you get it for that she is indeed a princess. And she tells you that the evil Guidus wants to have world domination by trying to take over the Radia Tower. So as the two main characters are adventuring around, they meet more characters along the way while also going into many other problems, and yeah, this basically sounds like a very generic plot. And you'd be right. But to keep in mind, this is a very early RPG, so you kinda had to expect it to be a very simplistic plot, but the one thing that I do think is interesting with the story though, is that it does have a few interesting twists. And obviously the twists are nothing like M. Night Shyamalan or anything like that, but I thought for an early RPG with a very simplistic story though, I thought they were interesting enough. And I should also mention that this game also has a lot of cutscenes that look very similar to the Ninja Gaiden games. Well, maybe not a lot of cutscenes, but quite a few of them, and I have a feeling it's probably because of the limitations. But anyways, the point that I'm trying to make here is that this is one of those RPGs where the story is there, but it's not really the main focus of the game. But for Famicom standards though, it's decent. So now, let's get moving on to the game's gameplay. So, it's a top-down action RPG, very similar to Final Fantasy, but only that, well, it's not turn-based. But it still has the random encounters though. So whenever you get into a battle, you actually get to fight exactly where you're standing, so I do think that is kind of interesting, because there's a lot of action RPGs with a party system very similar to this, but never actually took upon doing this concept, because most of the time it's usually like, you get into a fight and then you just get teleported to some random location where you just beat the shit out of each other. So I do think that is pretty cool, for that it does seem very ahead of its time. But as for the battles themselves, well, it basically plays like The Legend of Zelda, where you move around, you swing your sword at enemies, and also your party members do the same thing too. But before the battles can start though, it actually brings up a menu screen where you get to select uh, your different strategy, such as using items, magic, running away, which by the way, running away in this game is done by playing dead. And I find that the animation used whenever you do play dead to get away from them, it just amuses me a lot. And in typical RPG fashion, whenever you kill all the enemies on the screen, you get rewarded with EXP and possible items that you can get. It's actually very rare to get money from killing random monsters, but you can actually get uh, items that are used specifically for selling. So it actually works out fine, so don't worry, you're not going to be wasting your time killing off a bunch of enemies and you just get fuck all from it. And that sums up what you need to know about the battle system in this game. It's pretty much The Legend of Zelda if you had like a bunch of different party members with you and you all level up with each other. 
And I really don't think I really need to go over like the other stuff like going into different towns and buying shit and going to the inn and resting, which by the way in this game not only can you rest at the inn and save your game, but whenever you see a bed in like some random person's house, you can just sleep in it. Yeah, have you ever tried sleeping in some random person's bed before? And another typical trope is being able to just go inside people's houses and stealing their shit. So this game really did cover a lot of things that you get to do inside random people's houses. But one last important thing that I do have to mention though is that if you want to have characters learn different spells, you don't do it by leveling up traditionally. Instead, you have to find scrolls. And then you give those scrolls to whichever character you want. So that's basically it for the gameplay, unless you really want me to stretch on long enough and start talking about, like, every single thing that you get to buy in the game and every single, like, spell you learn, but nah, I'm not here to do that shit. So let's get moving on and start talking about the game's controls, and let's just talk about the battle system controls because I really don't think I need to go over, like, navigating and shit. So as for the combat in the game, I do think it does feel solid for that it pretty much feels like a Legend of Zelda game top down, but only that I do find this one is a little more slower pace. And what I mean by slower pace, I mean like the way how the battles go are a little more slower pace than a lot of other like action RPGs, but it's not like slow at like responding by pressing the button or anything like that. There's no like input lag. So the response timing is pretty good, but I will say, this game does have a little bit of a hit detection issue. It's not major, it's not like awful or anything, but it is something that did take some time to get used to a little bit. But everything else is easy to understand and does work pretty well. So now, as for the game's graphics, graphically, I think this game is actually pretty nice looking. Now for a game made in 1991, I guess you would expect it to look way nicer than this, but I still think it looks pretty good. But I'd say that the best part of the game would have to be all the backgrounds, like all like the places you get to go to. I think like all of them actually look really cool and really nice. And I also have to say, this fire effect that they have in this uh, lava level looks really awesome. So all the backgrounds I think are like the best part of the game, but as for the sprites themselves, they're decent. The main characters are all miniatures and you know, they look alright, not too bad. But as for the uh, enemies you get to fight, some of them are uh, not really the most memorable, but I do find that the bosses are pretty cool. But yeah, the regular enemies though, yeah, they're just kind of whatever. And as you would expect, those Ninja Gaiden style cutscenes that they have in this game are really great. And as I said before, it is unfortunate that there's like not a lot of these, but the few ones that you get are actually really good. So overall, I do think that the graphics in this one are good. Maybe not like super amazing compared to like other games released in 1991 and it's not super cutting edge like Metal Slater Glory, but it is good. And as for the game's music, the music in this one I also think is actually really good. There's a lot of really nice themes in here that are really catchy, some of them are upbeat, and some of them are also kind of dark sounding too for NES. So there is a bit of variety here, and I also do really like the battle theme as well. And I never found that the battle theme got like annoying whatsoever. But as good as the OST is though, not every song is a complete winner. There is like maybe like three songs maybe, give or take, that aren't really great, but even the ones that aren't great though are not bad. So that's another thing I can say about this game that is very similar to other Tecmo games is that they really know how to make some good music. In fact, it was actually composed by one of the guys who did the music for the original Ninja Guide, and so that makes perfect sense. Unfortunately, no Soji Magero, but hey, this is still good. So now, if you want to go out and buy yourself a copy of this game, obviously, like I say a bunch of times, that uh, this game will not be in English if you do buy an actual physical copy of the game, unless you get a reproduction cart with the fan translation on it, but if you just wanted to have the original copy, well, the cheapest I've seen it for was $20, and the highest I've seen it for was $60, but that was a complete in-box copy. But the highest loose one that I saw was about 40, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like really high for that type of game though. But there are reproduction cards of this game out there, I did see a couple of them. So now, as for my overall thoughts on The Chronicles of Radia War, is that I actually think this game is not only pretty good, but also holds up pretty well for an early RPG. 
Now, as much as I do have a soft spot for playing games like the very first Final Fantasy or the very first Dragon Quest, which I actually did play a lot as as a kid, well, as much as I loved those games as a kid, playing them now is kind of tough for me to go back to just because there's just a lot of stuff in those games that just haven't really aged the best. But I feel like this game, I think, actually ages pretty well. But, of course, it does have some parts that are a little bit dated, but not too bad. So I'll go over those things first. So if there is one thing about this game I do feel is the most dated would have to be trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Thankfully, this game does have an advice button which tells you exactly what your main objective is, but it's still pretty vague, so it's not the most helpful. But I suppose it's better than not having one at all. And the whole random encounters I do feel is a little bit of a dated concept, but I can tolerate it in this game because at least the encounter rate is not stupid. So those are really the major dated concepts I can think of that this game has, but even at that though, this game still has other like minor flaws. For such examples being that the hit detection in the game is not perfect, like I said, it's not bad, but it definitely could have been a little bit better. And while it is cool that this game has an action RPG party system, which was very uncommon at the time, Unfortunately, your AI partners can be a little bit of a uh, big dummy sometimes, where they just end up walking into like random terrain, or sometimes they just don't really feel like they're just attacking as much as they should. And trading between different equipment items with your party members can be a little bit tedious sometimes. But other than this though, I actually do think this game not only holds up pretty well for NES standards, but also I actually did have some fun with it. It was a pretty good, mindless, fun action RPG for its time. It doesn't have the most amazing stories ever, but like I said before, it does have its interesting elements to it that keeps it a little bit better than being average. But I guess that's something to expect for an NES RPG story since most of them were, you know, pretty typical. So yeah, if you want to play an action RPG that has a top-down view and plays like the original Legend of Zelda, then I think you might actually like this one. I think it's actually pretty enjoyable for what it is. It is a little unfortunate that this game never became like a huge series or anything, because I have a feeling that this game had potential to become a series. It could have been like Tecmo's take on like, I don't know, like Star Ocean or something. But putting that into perspective, maybe it is a good thing that this game was just a one and done game that was actually solid for that, well, you never know, maybe like if there was like more games in a series, then maybe the other ones could have like sucked or something, given how uh, Secret of the Stars turned out. But I'm just wishful thinking for something that could have been interesting, but anyways though, that's all I have to say about this game. I actually found it to be pretty enjoyable for an NES RPG. So anyways, with that being said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day. You won't get past me, even if it costs me my life.